So I just dropped off my car for an oil change and I figured what best way to spend two hours waiting than make a video. And you know, this is a neighborhood that I like to loiter in. It's a very nice neighborhood. Um, and I just got to the lake. It's very cold, but it's gonna be a good day. Let's see, there's normally this gator. There's normally this big ass gator that likes to sit in the water. Set up this camera in a place where it doesn't fall in the water, right? <laughs> Cause that would suck. There. I think that's a decent spot. Hey guys, my name is Jid Wee and welcome to Dollars Jamming. Once again, Dollars Jamming, yes. So on this channel, I'm gonna be making like tutorials, reviews, and creative and productivity videos. And on my music channel, Jid Wee, I'll be making music. So anything that has to do with talking will be on this channel. Anything that has to do with jamming will be on the other channel. I'm still gonna do like, you know, how does it sound, synthesizer, reviews on this channel. It's slow windy, please don't fall, camera. <laughs> I'm also trying out my new camera, the Sony a7C with the microphone, the Sony microphone. Hopefully it sounds good. We'll find out at the end of the video. <laughs> I'm gonna just hold this camera just to be safe. Um, also recovering from being sick for the past like week and a half. Pretty sure I had COVID or something similar. It was terrible, couldn't breathe at all. I'm feeling better now, luckily, but definitely put a stop to the videos, right? It's cold outside, but I would much rather have this nice wind than like scorching heat. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about Mo Gio Mo problems and how easy it is to like get caught in the trap of gear, especially when you're starting off. And I understand how like this subject can sound hypocritical from someone that has a gear channel, but even before I had this gear channel, I would go through gear like crazy. I would buy and sell, try something out, didn't fit my workflow, sell it, try something else out. And then what ended up really happening is that I just didn't make any music or I would just get a very superficial feel of whatever gear that I was using and didn't really learn anything properly, you know? And the thing that we forget about gear just because it's so shiny and there's so much new gear always coming out and we always see YouTubers <laughs> like myself um, with new gear, it's easy to forget that like gear is an instrument, right? <laughs> Especially when you're talking about like groove boxes and like let's say for example like the LP1, the machine, the MPC Live, those all require so much time to actually learn properly and be able to master. You know, it's going to take you years to be able to master one of those machines to its full extent and be able to make music on it smoothly without having to look at the manual or go online and see how you do this, how you do that. And that's something that we forget a lot of the times. And being a bedroom producer, it's really exciting to like be able to try out all this gear and all these different types of ways of making music. But at the end of the day, if you're not really mastering your main instrument, then you're not really doing anything. For me, my main instrument is piano and everything else is kind of just like a little sauce, you know, a little sauce that I add on. So that's why I like synthesizers because it's already something that I know. Like I already know the black and white keys, I already know most of my scales. Um, I don't really read music that much, although I'm trying to learn. Um, but that's something that I'm already comfortable with. So like collecting synthesizers is a bit different than collecting like groove boxes because like a groove box requires a lot more effort and a lot more energy to learn. Every groove box is different. I feel like when you first start off with music production, you just want to be a music producer right away. And you don't really think about like that you first have to be a musician. So for me, first I'm a musician before I'm anything else, right? I barely consider myself a music producer. Like I'm just now scratching the cat, scratching the surface of Ableton. But I did mess with Logic for a really long time. But even when I messed with Logic, it was so superficial and I feel like what makes people hate the doll and yes this is doll is jamming but still you gotta get your jams finished at some point right it's fun to jam but if you really want a finished production piece um you're gonna have to go in the doll unless you know someone makes an all-in-one machine where you don't um machine pun intended <laughs> um it's not there yet sadly not powerful enough to do what it claims to do sadly so until there is a machine that requires completely no DAW integration, um, you're gonna have to use a DAW. Again, this is just me talking to myself. I have like a hybrid workflow. I've been more in the DAW lately just because I really wanna finish tracks and not just do jams anymore. And it is possible, it is possible to completely do a one take stereo file recording of like a hardware setup 
I've done it before, it sounds awesome. I have full albums that I've done just one stereo file recordings, but that's not something that can be recreated if in like a life situation. That's not something that I'm ever gonna be able to recreate. So I'm really trying to build stuff that is not so destructive. Um, and by that I mean not just one stereo file that is just you mess up a little bit of reverb on something and then the whole track is done and you have to start all over again, right? But yeah, just also like embracing the tools that you have and not lusting for all the new gear that is always coming out. I know, again, it can sound hypocritical coming from me that does gear reviews, but you have to understand this is kind of how I'm making a living right now, which is awesome, by the way. I'm doing this kind of full time, I guess. I'm not really doing anything else right now. <laughs> except music stuff which is amazing and you know thank god for that but it's still not there you know like i'm such a small youtuber <laughs> i don't even have 40,000 k subs yet hit that sub but i am blessed to be able to do this but this didn't just this opportunity didn't just fall into my lap guys i've been doing this for five years or so and i started off buying all my own stuff <laughs> and then eventually companies like the way i make videos so then they want to send me stuff but then again, there's no free lunch. Nothing is for free. It's not just like, hey, here, take this. No, that's always something in return, right? And then I gotta pay taxes on this stuff too, so no free lunch. But that's okay because I would much rather be doing this than anything else. So thank you for, you know, making it happen and making it possible. Also, this didn't just happen. Oh no, there's a mist. There's a mist. This didn't just happen, guys. I've worked fast food all my life. KFC was my first job. I used to have to ride my bike 45 minutes back and forth from my house to KFC after school. I would get home at like 11.30 and then go to school the next day. Crazy, man, but like that kind of stuff makes you stronger, you know? Minimum wage, working minimum wage forever. Um, then I went to school for something that was gonna make me money. Yes, I finished my degree, you know, to make my mama proud. <laughs> but at the end of the day, all I can think about in my head is music and music. And that's also something that I probably should touch on, you know. When you're young, you always want to please people and you always, you're always doing something that you feel like you should be doing. Like, this is what I have to do because this is the job that's gonna, you know, be steady. This is the job that's gonna make me money. But you're unhappy because you're an artist and that's okay. It's okay to be an artist. Like, there have been artists for <laughs> thousands of years. Um, if you look at books, you guys know I love like Stoicism and philosophy and Marcus Aurelius. Um, and even uh, I've been trying to like finish Epictetus' discourses, which is so complicated um, to understand if you guys are like into philosophy. If you guys are into philosophy, it's definitely, you know, definitely something that changes the way that you think and the way that you look at life. Um, which is awesome. That's kind of where I've been at and also like trying to read more not really read but like listen to audiobooks because who the hell has time to read but like You know going for a walk in the morning and listening to an audiobook instead of like just going straight to work and by work I mean going straight to editing videos and making videos and making content because that is my job now and It's 24 7 guys. It's not you know it's not just making this video, it's making this video, getting the B-roll, getting, <laughs> make sure, making sure the audio is good, making sure everything is good. Um, editing the video, it can be very time consuming and very straining. And I also know that like a lot of more people are working from home now. And I myself know the struggle of like being able to clock out mentally, you know, or not being able to clock out mentally. Because when you have a job and you have somebody setting a schedule for you, it's a lot easier to be like, all right, four o'clock, peace, motherfuckers. I'm going home. Something just snapped over there. I'm really hoping that crocodile comes out so you guys can see him. I know a lot of people are having to deal with that change of finding the discipline to not be overtaken and like consumed by work and how easy it is especially when you like something that you do because like not only is this my hobby but it's my job and now it's everything you know like this is my whole life um and it can't be that way because it's unhealthy it can't be that way so really finding the discipline to like knowing when to be like okay you know it's five o'clock i'm not checking email i'm not gonna check email on my phone and just like being very strict with yourself to really be in a place where you can enjoy what you're doing without having it consume your life. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm in a lot better place than I was a couple months ago. 
um, just because I've been doing other things like I said I'm walking and I'm reading and I'm trying to meditate again although you know it's kind of hard but really trying to find a balance between what you love to do what you have to do and what you need to do is what you have to do and what you need to do the same thing <laughs> and also let's talk about that the things that you have to do and the things that you want to do right so like I said I'm sort of doing this full time now I don't even like to say it because once you say something Here's something else that I've learned from reading. You know, if you speak it, then your mind feels like you already did it. So if I'm like, oh, I'm a full-time YouTuber now, my mind's like, hey, I'm Gucci, but it's not true. I still have to make sure that this is consistent. I still have to make sure that I'm not really losing sight of what it is that I want to do with this channel. And it's not just gear reviews because that's not who I am. I'm not just reviewing gear. Like this isn't, this isn't that type of channel. And I'm sorry if that disappoints you. There's other channels for that. This is really like a creativity channel, creativity process, trying to get away from the computer to make music because again, that is a big part of the channel. How can I get inspired again when you've just been looking at the doll and clicking on the mouse and moving things around? Like that's annoying, you don't wanna do that, right? And I'm really gonna focus on like finding creative ways to make music without the computer, but not so much like hatred towards the doll because like I feel like at the beginning, there was a lot of hatred towards the doll coming from me and that was also like personal you know and I feel like a lot of that hate towards the doll comes from not knowing how to use the doll properly or being frustrated about wanting to do things and not knowing how to execute those things um, and I feel like that's something else just snapped in the water come on crocodile where are you but yeah it's always so awkward making these videos and then somebody like pops up like hey what you doing what you doing what you, what's it look like I'm doing filming myself being weird I'm just gonna watch this by myself. But yeah, really like, how do you take your music to the next level? Um, and not just for anybody else, but just for you. Because like, you know, there's no guarantee that people are gonna listen to your music. Straight up, even myself. <laughs> um, so you really have to know why it is that you're making music, who you're making music for. It should really just be for you. And are you enjoying the things that you're doing? There's also something called the negativity bias. Also, if you guys like totally unrelated, if you guys haven't seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix, watch that. Watch it with your whole family. Um, it pretty much just confirms everything that I've been saying about social media and like how terrible it is for your brain. And I understand that it's not like this for everybody, but I know the type of person that I am and the type of personality that I have and I can be a very addicting person. Um, it can be a good thing, you know, like I can get addicted to listening to audiobooks and then it makes my life better or I can get addicted to something else and you know it's a bad thing so I know that that's the kind of person that I am so if you don't have a problem with social media and it's working for you good for you but if you feel like social media is like pulling you in every way and in every direction um, you know definitely check that out it's definitely been eye-opening to not be on my phone all the time um, you really feel like less pulled and that's something else that Marcus Aurelius talks about a lot in the meditations, like the animal self, you know, it's like the urge, like don't give in to your urges doing things that you don't want to do just because like you're being pulled by something, right? And in whatever direction it is that you're being pulled in, and if it's not the direction that you want to be pulled in, you know, like try to remove those things from your life. And what I'm getting at with that related to music wise or like anything life wise is that the less time that you spend doing those things that you don't want to do is the more time that you're actually going to spend doing the things that you want to do like making music um playing your instrument like actually enjoying playing your instrument like you shouldn't look at practice as something like oh my god i gotta practice like it shouldn't be that way it's kind of like going to the gym i don't go to the gym i should it's kind of like everything that has some sort of resistance the thought of having to practice your instrument is more draining than actually playing your instrument like once you actually sit down and with your guitar or your synthesizer or whatever and you actually turn it on and play you're like wow i really enjoy this <laughs> you know like this is this is fun um and i feel like getting back to that is really important you know not only for me but i'm sure if you're watching this video maybe for you i don't know why are you watching this go home are you home? Probably. And I've made videos before about like trying to find balance between your hobby and your life. But sometimes it's not even your hobby. Like sometimes you have to find, well actually most of the time, all the time, you have to find a good balance between everything, between your work, between your family, between your hobby, 
between yourself, you know, like self-care, not just waking up and going straight to work, especially if you're working from home, really taking like that first hour of the day to do different things. Also just finished this book called Tiny Habits, which I thought was pretty good. Um, I'll put the links below. But basically how like sometimes we can get overwhelmed when we look at things from like too big of a picture instead of just like doing tiny little things. So for example, instead of like picking up your phone first thing in the morning, like, you know, put your phone outside of your room, turn off your phone before you go to bed, um, just like that extra step so you don't have to you don't feel so pulled to like waste your time right so yeah with this channel it's pretty much like the videos that i have to do you know that are videos that i've compromised is that a word is that an english word the videos that i've committed myself to do for companies um you know so that's kind of like my job right why 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 do i do this so much i like, I like bunnies but that's my to-do list right so like so i have a to-do list of things that i have to do and then once that to-do list is done, I can focus on the things that I actually want to do, like make these type of videos, make these type of videos that not only help me, but hopefully can help somebody else that only sees me do like the shiny videos and like the new year videos to really see that like it's not just that. That's not what making music is. And I am very thankful, again, you know, for all the opportunities that I've had. But again, it can also be straining and it's kind of hard when my job and my hobby are like the same thing because like it's very hard to dif differentiate the two so like if I'm making a video on the specific synthesizer and I'm doing that all day and I'm editing the video and I'm you know writing the script sometimes I write scripts sometimes I don't and then you know let's say it's five o'clock I have to pick up my daughter from school then I get home and then you know like how am I gonna spend the five to 12 o'clock when I go to bed I know it's terrible I need to go to bed earlier um, but how do I spend that 5 to let's let's say 10 just just so it don't sound that bad how can I spend that 5 to 10 what can I spend that 5 to 10 doing that is gonna be productive for me um, and not only for me but you know I also have to make sure that my daughter isn't just watching TV you know I need to make sure that she's doing something productive as well right like it's kind of hard to want to do anything musical after I've just spent five hours doing something with a synthesizer does that make sense so that's why i think it's important to like have different areas like even in your house where where you do things so like for me it's kind of i've been like struggling trying to have like my music area and my video area because like when i make music i also want to film the thing so you guys can see it but then i'm also thinking like it doesn't always have to be that way you know like you guys don't have to see everything I do. So I've just been, you know, I have a separate music area where I've been trying to like do my music stuff. Um, and then also I have this little modular corner where I've, you know, just like different, set yourself up to do different creative things. Um, not just in one area so you're not there all day you know so like if I'm working here all day I don't want to be sitting in this desk all day so even just making it a habit to go outside and honestly guys this I'm gonna definitely come back here this place is so chill nobody has come to bother me how great is that this would even be a great place to like just do a jam um, would you guys like that if you guys want to see my jams don't forget to subscribe to the other channel again because I'm doing all my music stuff over there gonna be doing live sets over there and stuff um, doing some like lo-fi covers so definitely check it out would mean a lot but yeah just getting out of like my comfort zone and I was doing the streams I think we got to like episode 20 something which is a lot that's a lot of episodes <laughs> for you know our streams our two hour streams but um, I might do them again. I was just getting like a little bit of anxiety. I don't know why, it's stupid, I know it is. I'm gonna get over it. Um, and also just because like I don't wanna just do streams with just, you know, I don't know. I just feel like I wanna do something else. But I might do them again, so you know, that's that. Um, but I really wanna focus on like doing like longer sets, really finishing some music, maybe singing, maybe, we'll see. Um, I'm not that great. I'm not that great of a singer, but that's okay. That's okay. Especially with like social media and stuff. There was a time years ago where I would even like check Facebook at like four in the morning. Like that's gross. That's that's sad to think about. I would have my phone like next to my bed and like, you know, open it, look for notifications. Like that's crazy, right? Like it's crazy how addictive all that garbage can be. Um and it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing when you're doing it because like you're interacting with all these people that 
I was like in a lot of like Facebook music groups. So like, you know, you feel like, oh, you found this niche, you found um, these people that like all the same stuff that you like. So like it, in your brain, it's kind of like it's OK because, you know, like you're you're enjoying it. Right. You're enjoying talking about the things that um, interest you. I feel like there's someone walking behind me. Yeah, there was. But then again, it's not really a real thing. And like you can make friends, you know, friends online. And I'm not saying that like it's impossible to make a friendship online. I have a few friends that I've made online. But what ends up happening most of the time is that you make this persona of who this person is in your head, you know, how they sound, how they act. And it's not even, you know, they're not even like that. And not only that, but it really takes away from like your real relationships. Like you're feeding all these other relationships that you've made online and you're not really feeding your real relationships, you know, like your actual friends and, you know, family and stuff like that. So I feel like coming, whoa, man, these birds are flying a little too close to this camera. Yeah, no, you know what? It's been, it's been great. And I feel like I'm in such a good place to talk about all this stuff because I'm no longer going through it. So like, it was a lot harder to talk about, you know, social media addiction when I was like all in it, you know, now, and you know, what's crazy, like YouTube, YouTube is kind of getting kind of like that. I mean, I'm sure it's not like that for everybody because not everybody, you know, has the same amount of interaction on their channel as some of the bigger channels do. But all these things that companies do to keep our attention. So like, for example, the YouTube studio, um, you know, when, when my video gets like the one out of 10, you know, you get those little fireworks and it's like, oh, you know, like all that stuff is like, it goes to your brain. And even like, there's something called the negativity bias. Um, that they talk about in the social dilemma. I'm not sure if they talk about it in the actual video, but then um, the guy that made the movie or documentary, it's kind of like a movie. Um, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast and I'm gonna link that below too because that was also a very good conversation. But yeah, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast and um, very good conversations that he had on there. Definitely check that out if you're like into that type of stuff. But yeah, so there's this thing called the negativity bias and it's like, for example, if I have like 100 thumbs up on my video and then I have like five thumbs down on my video, I'm not gonna focus on those 100, I'm gonna focus on those five thumbs down. And like, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that that happens, but that happens because that's just the way our brain is wired. Like we wanna please everyone, right? And there's always gonna be douchebags that, you know, leave mean comments and stuff, but you have to really, I feel like I can't even look at that stuff, you know? And like, I don't wanna like ignore my fans and like not answer to your comments and stuff but even like checking comments you know i have to like be very disciplined with myself and i feel like i haven't been as much as i would like to like my goal is to like check comments like once a week and that doesn't happen <laughs> you know i end up checking it like every day but you know it's a goal like i'm trying to strive to get to to that where it's not something that is constantly pulling me because like it's something in my head like oh you know check this oh i gotta check i gotta check no i don't have to check it's like it's there they're not going anywhere I'm gonna see it at the end of the week. So like, that's something that I'm really working on. Um, just because of that, like negativity bias, like you stay thinking about it, you know? You get 50 people saying, you know, this is awesome, this is great. And then another person saying, you know, this is garbage, you suck. You only focus on that. And the only way to not focus on that is to not be looking at it. So that's also something that I'm trying to learn. And yeah, you know, just life. Life teaches you things. I'm almost 30, guys. I hate saying it. But also, you know, I've learned a lot. I, I mean, you know, life is good. You can't complain. Could definitely be worse. So you have to be thankful for everything that happens. Um, I don't know, you know, like how long I'll be able to, to do this. Um, hopefully a long time. Hopefully this, you know, hopefully this is how I make a living, you know. It's not now. The only way that I'm able to do this is because of my sponsors. Um, and the main one being DistroKid. I know you guys see, hey, this video is brought to you by DistroKid. So like, you know, shout out to them. Cause like, if it wasn't for them, I couldn't be doing this like full time as I'm doing it now. And you know, that's just a little help that I get from them. So who knows like what the future has uh, in store for me. Um, I'm just gonna like keep doing me i'm gonna you know be myself and hopefully that's enough to keep you guys around love you guys i hope this video helped someone in some way i hope it wasn't too long i kind of you know kind of just talking to myself but you know you listening i hope you listening 
We didn't see the crocodile. Um, I guess that means I have to come back another day and do another one of these videos. Hopefully you guys liked it. Um, hopefully we'll see that gator, man, because it was huge. His head was like twice the size of my head. He was so close. But, um, but yeah, hopefully we'll see him next time. All right, love you guys. Peace.